What's up guys, back with another educational video and this week we are talking about artificial sweeteners. But first, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel and leave a comment for the algorithm. So I'm doing this video because there was a study looking at diet quality and artificial sweetener intake. And what they found, I'm just gonna to skip to the end, artificial sweetener intake was associated with worse overall diet quality. This is not surprising to me, but let's give the backstory now. In human randomized controlled trials, substituting diet drinks for sugar sweetened beverages produces weight loss. It's very clear, very consistent, and it even produces a little bit more weight loss than substituting with water. Probably because people eat less calories because they're getting that sweet taste fulfilled from the diet drinks, whereas with water, they're not getting that sweet taste fulfilled and maybe they search it out somewhere else. But in the cohort studies or in the epidemiology studies, we see the opposite. In those studies, we see that diet drink or artificial sweetener intake tends to be associated with increased levels of body fat and obesity. So where is the disconnect? Well, this is the case of what we like to call reverse causation. A lot of people, when there's an association between two variables, they initially jump to a causation. So for example, artificial sweetener intake associated with more body fat, therefore artificial sweeteners are causing you to gain body fat. But associations can go both ways. So is it that artificial sweeteners cause that? Because the human randomized control trials don't support that. Or is it that people with more body fat are more likely to consume artificial sweeteners. And in fact, that's what we do see. People who consume more artificial sweeteners are more likely to be overweight or obese, and overweight or obese people are more likely to make more diet attempts and more likely to self-select for diet drinks or artificial sweetener intake. And so this new study, again, supports what we see, which is people who consume more artificial sweeteners tend to have worse overall diet quality. And so it's the diet quality that is causing them to be overweight or obese, not the artificial sweeteners. To make this more plain, if we were going to use this logic that artificial sweeteners make you fat based on these associations, then we also have to say that intermittent fasting gives you an eating disorder because there was a recent study published looking at the prevalence of eating disorders and intermittent fasting and found that intermittent fasting was associated with more eating disorders and also higher body mass index. If we're going to play the association game, then we have to be consistent with our logic. And that means that intermittent fasting makes you fat and also might give you an eating disorder. That is not likely, especially again, based on the human randomized control trials we have with intermittent fasting. What is much more likely is people who already have negative body image and more body fat are self-selecting to try intermittent fasting and therefore it is a reverse causation. Now, it also could be that people select intermittent fasting because they're overweight or obese. They have a negative body image issue that gets exacerbated by doing intermittent fasting. That's, that's a possibility, but I wouldn't say we have conclusive data on that. And so this is an example of how we have to be very careful about the conclusions we make based on the type of study that's being examined. And so, so many times in the news we say, this linked with this, this associated with this. An association does not mean that there is a direct link or causation. In order to establish causation, you need, if you're gonna do epidemiology, you need overwhelming epidemiology data. But usually what we're looking for are human randomized control trials because those are going to control a lot of the extraneous variables that could influence the outcome. And the one variable you are changing is the thing you want to test. And you're randomizing people so that any inherent characteristics from the different groups are going to be presumably equally distributed across those groups so that they're not having an overall effect on the outcome. And you can be relatively confident that whatever difference you see is based on your treatment and not inherent characteristics of the subjects like you do with cohort studies. All that to say, artificial sweeteners can be a useful tool for weight loss, but just make sure that you're focusing on your overall diet quality because if your overall diet quality sucks, it's not gonna matter if you eat artificial sweeteners or not compared to regular sweeteners. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed the video and I will catch you next week.